welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is salmon. So if any of you know me, I have a lot of videos on wild salmon. I'm very pro wild salmon and anti farmed salmon for lots of reasons. I have lots and lots of videos uh, on my YouTube channel about that subject. And uh, let's see. So I'm going to read a comment here. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of propaganda out there that that support farmed salmon. Even some of the the better well-known sustainable chefs out there, the chefs that are doing farm to table, the chefs that are been very outspoken about sustainable seafood have av absolute, uh, have actually switched and are now serving farmed salmon like Rick Moon is like a spokesperson, spokesperson for a farmed salmon company called True North. Um, I'm not sure what kind of spokesperson uh, involvement that that means, but he's out there being a spokesperson for them. And he was like really back on it uh, in the 90s with sustainable fish. I, I don't know what's changed uh, in that equation. I can only assume what's changed in that equation, right? Um, so here's a person that often comments on my YouTube channel, Dan Sanger. This person often comments, and here's what he has to say, because I did a video on the difference in the feed of wild salmon versus farm salmon. So farm salmon, you have to actually dye the food. You have to actually add something to the food to dye it so it turns its flesh orange or pink or whatever color that is. Wild salmon, you don't need to do that. Wild salmon get that carotenoid, that, that pigment in their food naturally. So, here's what, um, here's what this person says, Dan. Now, I think Dan personally works for the uh, works for the farm salmon industry. I think it's uh, one of those fake names, and it's coming from a desk with inside Marine Harvest or one of those big companies, Cook Cook Aquaculture. Um, so, I think Dan might be one of those one of those people inside inside a, a corporate salmon farm. Wild salmon get their color from astaxanthin in their diet. Farmed salmon get their color from anazastin in their diet. Astaxanthin is astaxanthin. Huh. That seems that, that's very to the point, Dan, where the average person, the average uneducated person would say, gee, yeah, that makes sense, right? Folks, you have to understand that these corporations, food, so food suppliers, food processors, want you to be uneducated. Uh, just because the more uneducated you are, the uh, the poor choices you're going to make or the choices you're going to make in their favor. So, for example, when I go make videos and I talk about things that that are that they don't want me to talk about, then they pay somebody or they get an account and they go on here and they type stupid stuff like this to trick most of the people watching the video. And this is done in a lot of my health videos too. I have I have a lot of comments, a lot of trolls go out, a lot of shills go out there. Um, people that are paid for, that are paid by the pharmaceutical industry to go out there and just educate people the wrong way to people to sort of prove the stuff that I'm saying totally wrong and, and make believe like there's some science behind what they're saying. So this person's true. Wild salmon and farm salmon are both fed astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is a very strong antioxidant. Um, Known for uh, known for a lot of good things, including inflammatory. It has lower inflammatory effects, anti-inflammatory effects that they're saying are very good because it, it does a lot of good in the body as far as anti-inflammatory. So, here's the difference, folks. The stuff in the wild eats krill. Krill eat phytoplankton. Phytoplankton have that carotenoid. It gets passed down the food chain from the phytoplankton, which the salmon can eat directly, or the krill that the salmon. That's why krill oil, you see a lot of doctors or health nutritionists, health gurus, promoting krill oil as opposed to um, other sources of, of, of heart healthy omega-3 fats because krill oil has a lot of these beneficial things in it. So the krill are, are healthy for the salmon to eat. Well, in a salmon farm, they don't have krill. They don't have phytoplankton. They have pellets made of soy or maybe corn um, and other ground up fish parts from other parts of the world where, uh, like for example, in, um, in Norway where they farm salmon, they go over to the Baltic Sea and just rape that sea of all the small little fish that you and I wouldn't eat, that you couldn't go into the, into the food chain and grind it up. Now the Baltic Sea is not clean to begin with. 
all these fish are ground up. It's very high fat food that they actually make for salmon, all fish, but based salmon especially need a very high fat uh, diet to be able to grow and the higher fat that they have and while they're being farmed, the bigger and faster they'll grow. And that comes with a lot of consequences too, the fat that gets put in there because it needs to be stabilized with a antioxidant or some kind of preservative or chemical that is, uh, I forgot what the name is, ubiquin, I forgot what it's called, but it's really some funky, harsh chemical that they're putting into the salmon pellets to preserve the fat or else it would oxidize and be rancid and rotten because it's such high in fat, the food pellets. So now they have to basically get this astaxanthin into the food of the salmon, hopefully to turn its color. Well, here's the problem. These salmon farms, they're not buying the wild stuff. They're not buying the phyto, they're not buying the krill and the phytoplankton. They're actually going to uh, something like sugarcane or s corn or soy, I believe, to extract what can be made into astaxanthin, which is a totally different source, totally different nutritional properties, or they'll go right to a, a petroleum-based astaxanthin. Yes, a petroleum-based astaxanthin, which then is put into the fish food. So this person is saying that they're both fed astaxanthin. They're right. They're both being fed astaxanthin in the wild or the farm. But the farm stuff, I can guarantee, most likely is not getting fed with the same astaxanthin quality uh, or sourcing that the wild eats out in the natural. It's getting from, and folks, it's scary, but in a lot of cases, it's getting it from a petroleum-based astaxanthin. Now, you and I can take astaxanthin. It's a very healthy, uh, like I said, very healthy supplement. It can be found in chlorella or spirulina, especially. Uh, chlorella is a great source of astaxanthin. Uh, so you can take chlorella tablets. Chlorella does wonders for the body on a lot of different levels. Um, so, but again, the fish farms are raising millions of pounds of fish at a time, they're not buying the high quality stuff. They're buying the cheapest possible things they can buy, which is why the fish processors, the pellet processors, the food processors that make the pellets for the salmon farms are buying the bottom of the barrel, the worst, the, the most inexpensive fish possible. Now, another downside to the farm salmon industry, the farm salmon industry is, it's just, it started out wrong and it's still wrong and there's certain farms that might be doing a better job. Yes, there are and there might be other farms that, that have really advanced and are, and are going into an inland based water contained system, which is very, very few in between because it costs like seven times more. So it's a million dollar investment versus a $7 million investment to build these farms and a lot of farms aren't willing to do that. Um, where was I going with this point? I, you know, I, I've just been studying salmon for so long and oh, the, the industry to begin with is wrong. It takes three times, three, three pounds of wild caught fish protein to make one pound of salmon. So the equation's off to begin with. So they have to go into the ocean and rape and pillage and just destroy the ocean's natural resources of smaller fish. These smaller fish are meant for other fish to consume. So a lot of people think, well, gee, I'm eating wild salmon and I'm going to save the wild salmon population because wild fish are, are going extinct and, and this, that. But folks, you're actually eating more fish by consuming wild salmon because of the way everything's processed. And it's a whole nother topic about how wild salmon, which I will touch, touch base on another video on that soon. And I have on plenty of videos on how wild uh, farm salmon are actually spreading the disease into the wild salmon because they place salmon farms in the migratory path of wild salmon. So salmon farms are placed in the migratory path of wild salmon because they know that wild salmon do well there and salmon must do well there. So what happens is the fish get all the disease. When they spawn, they, the wild fish, when they go up and back, when they spawn and they, they're born, these little fries that swim by, little tiny, tiny salmon fries, the babies, when they swim by this open cesspool of a salmon farm out there, um, they're going to get diseases, they're going to get lice, they're going to get all these flus, they're going to get the things, they're going to be transmittable. These little tiny salmon don't have an immune system like an adult salmon yet. So when they keep saying that our wild salmon are dying off, it's not because we're eating them, it's not because we're over harvesting. In fact, in Alaska, the most predominant state to catch wild salmon, they're, they work off of strict, strict quotas. So they're counting the fish as they go up. I mean, the fish are tracked as they go up to spawn. But as the fish come down, once they get into the, into the bays, it's a whole different situation. The diseases they catch, and by the time they swim out to the ocean, they're dying off. So it's not because we're overfishing, folks. It's because salmon farms, 
There's a direct correlation in salmon farms and the diseases they spread that are killing off the wild salmon. And now you have to harvest all these other fish to grow wild salmon, which now you're, you're cheating the food supply for other fish in the ocean, which then, that just goes up the line, folks. It goes up the line from salmon all the way to whales are all being cheated on the food supply system because greedy salmon farms are going to tell you otherwise how they're saving the global supply of fish and how they're feeding the world and how it's so much safer. And then some of these salmon farms go on to tell you that, hey, um, our salmon's organic. Folks, there really is no certified organic standards for salmon farms. It's a self-regulated term by the industry. It's what they impose upon themselves. How in the world can you have a certified organic, and I see local chefs with this on their menu, organic salmon or Faroe Island salmon. Faroe Island salmon is, is known to be one of the most polluted places because they dumped World War II after the war. They, they dumped all this nuclear waste up there because it was so remote. Because it was up there, it was remote. We'll just dump stuff there. So the Faroe Islands, when you go onto their websites, it's, it looks like there's beautiful, pristine islands and this and that. And But it's still a salmon farm. It's Folks, it's still farmed salmon. There is one way that salmon farm does improve, and that's a containment system. Uh, there's a farm up in uh, British Columbia, which is called Kutera. Kutera Farms, or, um, and Norway now has some tax incentives for the salmon farms. This, but again, it's a seven times, seven to one investment. And that's a lot for a salmon farm. That's a lot for any business, a seven times to one. But I hope they'll be on the phone with Kutera soon because uh, I've had conversations with the folks from Kutera. Because uh, what they're doing is much, much, much better than the open bay. See, salmon are farmed in a pen. It's an open pen that are put into bays. And the salmon basically are jam-packed, two per bathtub or one per bathtub if it's low density. And they just swim around all day and they eat, they crap on each other, all the disease goes there, it all falls to the bottom of the ocean floor. In fact, an average size salmon farm in Scotland produces enough waste as a city, as a municipal city the size of 10,000 people. And that waste is just dumped onto the ocean floor all day long. The salmon swim in it, it falls down on them. That's how, the folks, this is how things, if we lived like this, we'd be a mess. We'd be a disaster. We'd be a pharmaceuticals uh, dream come true if we lived like farm salmon, folks. Well, the pharmaceutical industry would be jumping up and down. It would be, it would be 10 times, 20 times more profitable than they are now because everybody would be sick. You can't live like that. It's in, you don't, even fish that are in the ocean, don't, aren't supposed to live that close together. So, astaxanthin, there's different levels of astaxanthin. When comments come up like this on YouTube or people say something, it's just somebody trying to say that, hey, you shouldn't think for yourself and here's somebody who says something that might be very, 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 very relevant and they just don't want you to think for yourself. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano, thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and uh, definitely share this or pass it on if you found it interesting.